Okay, God is good. And all the time. Yeah, I know it's a cold morning, but we thank God for being able to meet with you this morning again. I want us just to have a word of prayer, then we study the word together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. As we study your word, we invite your spirit to be our guide and our teacher. May you lead us into all the truth. May you take difficult truth and make it simple. May you make our hearts be in earnest to hear your voice and more that we may have a converting experience in our lives. This is our prayer, believing and trusting in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So I want to welcome you again today to our continuation. Yesterday we were looking at, am I prepared for what? For marriage. And uh, there were some points that I think we were able to establish I, I believe that the, the studies we are having are helping you. Are they? Yeah, if you apply. One of the problems we have with uh, studies in courtship is that uh, many students eventually do what they want to do. They hear all these things, they, they take notes. But eventually when it comes to making a decision and doing what they are supposed to do, they, they always follow their own uh, wisdom and uh, then end up making the same mistakes that they were warned about. I have seen these across campuses, uh, even, even with, with very close friends that I have in ministry. You find the very mistake that you are warned not to do is the one that you, you just do. That is why I shared with you in the morning, yesterday, that uh, the issue of courtship is like health reform. It is not about human effort. It's about your dependence on Christ. Without the presence of Jesus in the heart, you will not even want to do some of the things we are learning. But if Christ is with you day by day, he will energize your heart to make a decision and to live right. So you need to know that conversion is very important to be able to live by the things that we've been learning. Uh, that is a very important point that you need to understand. It's not by your human effort that you will be able to realize some of the things that we are learning here, but it's uh, the presence of Christ in the heart by faith. So we, we had actually looked at some critical questions and uh, today I want us to deal with the uh, seeking counsel when it comes to getting married. Uh, how do you go about approaching a lady or approaching a man? What are the steps that you are supposed to actually put into consideration? But before we, we look at that, I, I made some statements yesterday in the preparation for marriage that I, I just want to remind you Yesterday we learned that uh, that love is not it is not blind. We were able to see that actually passion is the one that is headstrong, rash, and reasonable and defiant of all restraint. If you find someone who says that they love someone so much that in the event of, of a breakup they will die, that is not love. Amen? Don't be misguided. That is not what? That is not love. Love is not, love is not headstrong. It does not have to have its way. I don't know if you're getting me. Si lazima, iende jinsi ambavyo nataka. Love does not seek its own. It's own. Love, love, is, love is not something that is domineering and, and controlling. That is not what we call love. Actually, the biblical definition of love is love is patient, love is kind. Love endures all things, love bears all things, love rejoices in the truth. So you need to understand again that if, if love is in your heart, love will actually take God into all its plans and will be in perfect harmony with the Spirit of God. But if you have passion, you will possess these attributes. You will be headstrong, you will be rash. You don't want to take time to make a decision. You just want to make a what? A decision regardless. Even though it's a wrong decision, all you want to do is to decide. 
and then unreasonable. You don't want to follow reason. You don't want to reason out. I actually ask some people that right now, if you really sit down, do you really need a relationship? Those are questions you need to ask yourself. As in, say, jinsi ambavyo na jiona kama mwanafunzi. Do you need one? That is called reason. Amen? <laughs> you don't need to be unreasonable. Love is not like that. And at the same time, to mesema, it's not defiant of all. Restraint. By the way, I want to tell you, there is no beauty or joy in defying your parents, defying your friends, defying your church in the name of getting attached to a lady or a man. You read too much novels and you watch too much soap operas. The way you are quiet. Love actually values the people around. You need to know that those are very important points. And that is why, even though, even though, was Isaac a young man when he was 40? And we say he was very young. But did he feel annoyed with the father for having sent Eliezer to go look for a wife for him? Did he defy the father? There, 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 we need to understand that love is not what we think it is. It is not what you are seeing in, so, in social media and, and what you are seeing in Hollywood and what you are seeing in soap operas. But the love is very calm, very reasonable. And there is one more statement that I made that I want to also make sure you understand. Those who are thus controlled by love will not be absorbed in each other's society at a loss of interest in the prayer meeting and the religious service. Uh, have you met these people who, because they are quoting, it's all about them? Kwa barabara ni mikono. Wakika kwa gari, wameshikana. Wakinini pali, kila Facebook page, unawaona. Eh? Every place in WhatsApp, they are there. As in, what's wrong with you? Huh? You know the big question I ask myself, don't other people also have their wives? Do we throw them around like that? <laughs> you need to understand that some of these things, by the way, are serious problems that you need to ha actually have in your mind. What makes you think that because you have a wife, it's your duty to post him on every page? Every WhatsApp, every status, killer pali. I, I personally I tend to believe that a lot of that will actually be a revelation of hidden problems that you don't want to do what to expose. Because if you are controlled by love, you will not be so absorbed to the point that you cannot perform your duties. By the way, if the courtship is in harmony with the will of God, you will be able to court and pass exams. You are able to quote and be in the church board. Amen? You are able to quote and go for mission. You are able to quote, if my marriage was not, is not founded on love, I cannot be married happily and still come here to preach. Do you know many times courtship is the end of the spiritual life of many students? Akianza kuko TV, ameacha kani? Church board akuji, maombi akuji, that is not love. If the love is in harmony with, with God's will, you will not be so absorbed. You will not make the person that you are quoting, this statement here, will not make the object of its choice an idol. Uh, love is not that sensual. It is, it is, not, it is not that an all-important an all uh, issue in your life so that everything else revolves around it. And that is why I told you, by the way, if you go and, and look at some of the quotations we are having here, you will realize that that love which has no better foundation than mere sensual gratification will be headstrong, blind and uncontrollable. Honor, truth and every noble elevated power of the mind are brought under the slavery of passions. The man who is bound in the chains of this infatuation is too often Deaf to the voice of reason and conscience, neither argument nor entreaty can lead him to see the folly of his what? Of his course. So you'll find where passion is, uh, there is no honor, there is no truth. 
you are actually under slavery. And this is what usually happens when people are cheating in marriage. A question I'm always asked whenever we are doing family life with older people is, why do people cheat? Why do you think people really cheat in marriage? This statement here answers it. Honor, truth, and every noble elevated power of the mind are brought under. It is normally a denial of the voice of reason and conscience. Because why would you leave your beautiful wife that you vowed to love and protect for a lady outside there who may not be as beautiful, <laughs> may not be as caring, may not be the mother of your kids, and you leave them with the knowledge that in the event you are caught, you have broken your home? Why do you take such a risk? But you know there are men who do that every day. It's totally out of reason. It could be coming out of the definition of the understanding of love. Love is not a strong, fiery, impetuous passion. On the contrary, it is a calm. It is calm and deep in its nature. It's, it's calm. It's calm and and deep. It's, it's not something that is, is so impatient and rash and, and this person is just infatuated. It is just about you. I don't know, have you seen these places where people are quoting and the only thing they do is that they text all day through the year. I mean, I took last civil lecture and I found hour for a chat. You know, I don't know class. I don't know lecture and I found out. Text bado. Huh? Nini, 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 and what, 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 and, and you're back, huh? Church board, you are just on each other's society. You are, you are, your reasoning is actually tampered with. Love is not like that. Love is calm and deep. It looks beyond mere externals and is attracted by qualities alone. It is wise and discriminating, and its devotion is real and abiding. By the way, when you're looking for a partner in marriage and you're controlled by the Spirit of God, you will realize that there are secondary qualities and there are primary qualities. What is the primary quality in a man? For example, number one is fearing God. Amen? God-fearing. That is the primary quality. Now, in harmony with that, what is the secondary quality? Secondary means it is not the one dominating. He has money or he has resources, a lot of resources. Because we differ in our ability of having resources. Let me give an example. When I was looking for a wife, when I was getting myself involved in, in looking for a, a lady that I wanted to quote. The primary quality I was looking for is a woman who was God-fearing, yes. And I knew that a God-fearing woman will naturally possess a humble, meek, and quiet spirit. I was looking for a lady who is teachable, a lady I can reason with, and a lady who is also motivated for ministry like me. So among some of the ladies I met who were also motivated in ministry and also knew the spirit of prophecy and the Bible, there were some who were very angry and could not be corrected. You get, always fighting, <laughs> always wanting to prove that they know better. Who would want to live with someone like that? So as much as we had the circle, I was not looking for merely external qualities of just beauty and the others, but I knew that at the end of the day, you don't look, you look beyond the mere externals. Because I know at the end of the day, marriage is, is being able to respect each other, being able to have a, a conflict resolution. I actually say it's, it's much better to marry someone who is quick to say I'm sorry than someone who is too proud to apologize when they are wrong. Because when you get married, you'll realize those things are very, very important. We are together <laughs> for a relationship to do what? 
to survive. So those are some of the things that you need to know that love will not just look at the externals. It's not about her beauty or the fact that the person is doing which course or, or has a lot of money or is working with the World Bank uh, or is a software engineer for Microsoft or whatever it is that you're looking for. That the basis is, is this person habitable? You're getting me. Is it someone you can live with <laughs> and reason with and love and cherish within your heart? And that is why it's discriminating and, and its devotion is real and abiding. So you need to know that these are very important words you need to understand. Love lifts up the realm of passion and impulse, becomes spiritualized and is revealed in words and acts. A Christian must have a sanctified tenderness and love in which there is no impatience of fretfulness, the rude, harsh manners must be softened by the grace of Christ. Yeah, so genuine love will, will possess those qualities. In fact, one thing I usually do when, when we married, our first year, our book of study was Adventist Home. And uh, there's, there's one thing we learned when we were studying the Adventist Home. We realized that actually what sustains a marriage once the two of you are married, is not the fact that the two of you are incapable of disagreeing or that your mind is the same with your partner. Do you know, interestingly, in, there, are, there are issues that we discuss where my, my, my wife thinks opposite with what I think, directly opposite. <laughs> There's something I'm thinking, this is the direction I'm supposed to actually She's thinking what? Differently. But we realize that I can summarize the Adventist term in one statement. Look not only into your own things, but into the things of others. And then the Bible gives a description there in, in the book of Philippians 1. Can you read Philippians 1 from verse 1 to 5? So that I, make, I give you an understanding of how I can summarize Adventist home. My summary of the book Adventist home. How marriage flourishes. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 5. Chapter 2, from verse 1 to 5. The Bible says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, any fellowship of, of the Spirit, if any boils and masses, fulfill ye my joy. So what is love going to bring into the marriage or in the courtship? You're going to be, I'm not saying you're going to think exactly the same. <laughs> but you're going to be like, all of you are looking for peace. All of you are looking for a prayerful, a prayerful family. All of you are looking for a certain number of kids. You, you, you have some agreement. You are able to come, you are like-minded. All of you are looking for preaching or, or maybe ministry. All of you are concerned about country living. All of you are concerned about health reform. You don't want your kids to have a taste of flesh in their lives. You want them to be educated well. You don't want them to develop complications that come with using a lot of candies and cakes. Any, at, at the end of the day, you have a common mind regarding what you want to do as a family. Just continue. Having the same love. Being of one accord. Of one mind. Continue. Meaning that the real genuine love, there is nothing that will be done out of strife or vain glory. What is vain glory? Meaning in everything I'm doing in my marriage or in my courtship, I will not do anything to glorify myself. Amen? I will always do something to glorify and honor God. But I will put my partner ahead of me. Just continue. In lowliness of mind, Now, that is the point. That is what summarizes Adventist home and everything. Esteem the other person better than yourself. How, what does that mean? That means that if, if there is love in the home, nakitanda upande moja maji limuagika, and both of you can sleep in the bed, you need to have a struggle on who will sleep in the bed. Because the husband will be saying, acha mini lale kwa kiti. And the wife will be saying, None of you will want to sleep on the bed because you esteem the other better. That is what love is, by the way. 
Amen. Love is, even now when you're quoting, you know very well that sleeping with the lady you are quoting may, may actually cause her to have a child or she's taking pills every day. By the way, a real gentleman, because you esteem her better than you, you will refrain from doing it at all costs because you love her. If you don't love her, you will watch her taking those pills, having those complications, going through those difficulties. Uh, constantly, I meet people, they're always having a pregnancy scare. You will, not, you will not bring a lady into that situation when you genuinely love them. So love esteems the other better than themselves. Do you think a home where the husband esteems the wife to be better and the wife esteems the husband to be better, you will have any real conflict? What happens when an argument arises? Each of you will be one to be the first person to back down, isn't it? What does that mean? Is there an argument now? Like, you know, what if there is a house where both of you want to be glorified? What will happen? Mtapigana, adi muite neighbor, adi muite pastor, adi muite marafiki. Do you know there are marriages I know of even in the church? They may even be former students of your school or people that are always having a discussion, a meeting here to solve conflict. So, mayona nyumba kama hizo. I know of homes where every week kuna simu umepigiwa. Atukubaliani na baba nani, akiwe kuja uongelesha baba nani. You have to constantly come and talk to baba nani or talk to mama nani because <laughs> they can't talk with each other. What is wrong with the two of them? How can you be in five years of marriage but you don't even know how to talk to each other? That, that makes me question the element of what? Love. Love is not rude. It does not have harsh manners. These things must be softened by the grace of what? Of Christ. To love as Christ loved means to manifest unselfishness at all times and in all places and by kind words and pleasant looks. So these are some of the things you will need to know even when you're looking for a partner. By the way, as a lady, a man who loves you will genuinely, in all circumstances, be, love, be kind, patient, and also, remember, love is not just patience and kindness when you are looking for something. You will also have kind words and pleasant looks. I usually say things like, kindly, please. Huh? If, if, if you are able, those are words of love. There is no amen. Amen? Yeah. There's a misconception. I remember I was teaching this in a, in a church where there are a lot of uh, little men, kissy men, and, and I realized there was, there was a big problem. There's this misconception that has come among some men that ukiwa mpole in a relationship where si mwanaume. Eh? Mwanaume ni surangumu, ukali, You're always threatening. Your wife is a kid and your kids are kids. Huh? <laughs> I can guarantee you that home, even your children, may, may serve that man out of fear, but not out of genuine what? Genuine love. Jenny love does not fear. By the way, do you, know, do you know how much power a woman has when she is loving and humble and meek and submissive to the husband? When you are like that to your husband, he can buy you a car that he can't afford. And you will have to convince him to take it back <laughs> because you don't want to be in debt. Because he feels that there is nothing he can't do for you. But now that we have feminism going around, women are being told they are better than men. What a man can do, a woman can what? Now there's competition in marriage. Women don't want to submit. 
and because they can't submit to their husbands, human men are supposed to flourish with respect as a form of love. What happens is that you can't have two men in the same house. When a man realizes a woman has manly attributes, you are rude and controlling and you want to control the house, he feels like there are two men in the house. What will happen? He will not now treat you as a lady. What will happen between the two of you? He will handle you the way he handles the boys. And what happens? Hmm? The lady will not like it because a woman wants attention and what? Appreciation and, and time. And that is how problems begin in marriage, by the way. You find a woman sit down with other women and be like, and you realize complications begin arising more and more. Some of these things are merely because in the choice of a partner, you never looked at those things. By the way, the ladies who are here, don't let anyone deceive you to marry a man simply because he has a car or he is working in a big place or simply because he, he is... Uh, He's, he dresses nicely. Those are good things to look at. <laughs> but that is not the, the primary what? The primary thing is that they possess genuine love. Genuine love, which is a very powerful thing. Now, the one more thing that I wanted to pass to students, this is what I was sharing yesterday, but I think I'll, I'll also pass it across today, is that as a student right now, I will not encourage you to have your whole life revolving around looking for a partner when you are still in school unless you are either about to finish or you are finishing school the earlier years of campus I would, I, would, I would acknowledge and advise you this is my counsel now this is me making an appeal, amen I would rather you spend them on your books and growing spiritually by the way, most of the things I know right now that I teach about, ata in my head, the ones I can quote. Do you know when I learned them? You think it's, it's after campus? It is in campus that I read Desire of Ages. It is in campus that I did Testimonies for the Church, Volume 1, almost to 9. It is in campus that I did uh, uh, Great Controversy over and over. It is in campus because... The, the time I had, I understood that my time in campus was essentially three things. One is library, two is class, three is church, and my bed or my room. You get the point? The way you're looking at me, you're like, okay. <laughs> There's a reason why I made that decision. Because... My classmates and many of those I was in class were always sleeping with each other. Classmates wangu napata huyo msichana na yule jana walikuwa pamoja and everything. I said I can't join this 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 what. By the way, let me tell you something. You know, at the end of when you know people very well, these ladies who are doing all these things are the ones who wanted us to marry them by the time we were getting to fourth year. And we have seen you all the way from first year. You know, we <laughs> we, we can actually tell what kind of temperament and trait you've been having in school. That is why you find Sister White makes some statements about students, and I would rather you take this into consideration, that you are now, you are now in your student's life, let your mind dwell upon, keep all sentima sentimentalism apart from your life. As in, don't make, don't make your student life to be the time when you are so concerned about courtship, so concerned about a lady, a man, as in you're so absorbed in all this, you are now in the formative period of character. Nothing with you is to be considered trivial or unimportant that which will attract you from your highest, holiest interest. Your efficiency in preparation to do the work God has assigned you. By the way, I can guarantee you, as a student, don't leave this school when you are not able to perform the subject or the course that you are doing to such a level where you are competitive. Understand that that is the reason why you are in school. You can't leave school as a, a very lazy, poor engineer, or, or you, are, you, are, you, you don't understand what you are doing in, in the field of maybe information technology or whatever. You can't even code and program. 
When should you put more time? Right now. Now I began to stress the courtship. It doesn't really add up very well. And that is why you find these, these quotations are given. In fact, she says, students, students, students. While at school, students should not allow their minds to become by thoughts of And that is why when I meet students in high school, to be more particular, telling me that they want a relationship talk, <laughs> the only talk I can tell them is remove those things from your mind until a later what? <laughs> a later time. Huh? What relationship talk? They are to gain a fitness for the work of God and this thought is ever to be uppermost. Some who attend the college do not properly improve their time of the buoyancy of youth, they span the restraint that is brought up to bear upon them. Especially do they rebel against the rules that will not allow young gentlemen to pay attention to young ladies. Full well is known the evil of such a course in this degenerate age. The infatuation on the part of both young men and women in thus placing their affections upon each other during school days shows a lack of... Let me repeat that part. Probably you didn't hear it. The infatuation on the part of both young men and women in thus placing their affections upon each other during school days shows a lack of yeah so when you find someone is, is in school and the only thing that occupies their mind is how they can get a girlfriend or a boyfriend or that is the only thing that stresses you then it shows that you actually lack good judgment because that is not supposed to be the uppermost thing in your mind that is not supposed to be the, the real issue that should you my brother this battle creek you uh, college, uh, they had rules regarding courtship. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 109. She says, should you, my brother, go to our college now as you have planned? I fear your course there. Your express determination to have a lady's company wherever you, you should go shows me that you are far from being to be benefited by going to what? <laughs> Remember I told you the other day about alliances you are to form? You cannot tell me that as a man, you are only comfortable when you are among ladies. And as a lady, you are only comfortable being among, among men. That is, that is supposed to be unnatural. What happens to being shy? Like what I'm teaching is, is 17th century stuff. Yeah? And we are in the 21st what? <laughs> I just want you to understand that put a reasonable boundary in how you do things. By the way, the ladies and sisters who are here, I will guarantee you, if you're not ready to settle down in courtship with men, spend most of your time with your class, with your duties in the church and everything else, but don't love the company of the opposite sex so that you always are there talking, laughing, talking in a fond manner, touching each other. Umeona hizo hizo those instances. Mnakaa hapo mnaongea sana hadi mnaongea hadi mwanaume anashika na cheka hadi anasema hey. Eh? Huh? And that is a what? That is a lady. Yaani you you are too fond of each other's company. Some of these things may not be evil in themselves, but what they will bring between you is an atmosphere that will lead to sin. I do not wish that you the, this infatuation is upon you is more satanic than divine. Which infatuation? Wanting to be in a ladies? Wherever you go. <laughs> yes, she was very particular with her words. I do not wish to have you disappointed in regard to Battle Creek. The rules are strict. They are strict there. As I'm not sure, there are no rules that are here that are strict. I know there are some men here who spend all the day in the ladies' room. Senior? Class uh, mnamaliza sangapi? Five. Iyo five anatoka tu class hivi. Anaenda kwa njeri. Hmm? Anaka upu wadi sangapi? Saa tano usiku. Hmm? Andi narudi kulala. Kesho tena? Class ikiisha? Kwa njeri. Anaka upu. Lakini siti wanakota hata. They are not coating. Are we together? <laughs> Those are some of the things that will actually, she's saying that that kind of influence is actually more satanic than divine. 
no quoting is allowed in Battle Creek. She says the school will be worth nothing to students. They were, were they to become entangled in love affairs as you have been. That is what she's saying there. Our college would soon be demoralized. Parents do not send their children to our college or to our offices to commence a love sick sentimental life, but to be educated in the sciences or to learn the printer's what? Trade. Were the rules so lax that the youth were allowed to become bewildered and infatuated with the society of the opposite sex as you have been for some months past, the object of going to Battle Creek would be lost. And, and this is something that you need to understand very well. That in your student life, I know you will find preachers coming here teaching you about relationships. You may have pastors come, you may have others come. Maybe I will give you my own counsel from my own experience with students. Do not quote when you know in your heart you are not ready. Amen? And understand that it, there is dignity in being single. Amen? If you are not, if you are not quoting now, you will not find a man. Who said? Hmm? That you will not find a woman. Who said? There is dignity in being single. I would rather you, you grow fast in the, in, the, in the things of God and, and grow in the things that pertain to the sciences you are studying here. You will realize that you will excel in your class. You will excel in every aspect. One thing I tell most people, and this is a truth you will learn, if you are attached to the right people, you are part of an active ministry, you are concentrating in church projects, after you finish school, you will have more suitors who want to get married to you than now in school. That has gone over your heads. This is a truth that you will learn, by the way. Personally, Mimi, I met more suitors who want to have a marriage engagement after school than when? Than in school. Because you are not simply part... You know the problem that many people have, wale when you unaskia wanaenda wanakwambia probably wamekwama, is they go and they stop church activities. And then anapata kazi, kanisa kuji, they are not part of a, a church, a working church, they are not part of, of, of ministry, they are not part, they are just working in some environment, when you, their colleagues at work are only vulgar and vain, and then they are saying, wanawake tuliacha campus. And then number two, let me ask you another question. The time you are here in campus, see you study one another, do I have to study you in courtship? Lazimo kwe girlfriend yangu nyo niku study. See, I can be studying you all these years. Nione, by the way, by the time I'm finishing school, ama nikitoka, mi naona, Sister Mary, karakta yake na kila kitu, you sustain that friendship after school, amen? Or you sustain it through your time of coming out of school. You know. When you feel the time is right for you, you make the move. Yeah. You're getting me. Personally, I got married to a, 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 a college mate. I am one of those who left school with two degrees. You get. <laughs> the lady I'm married to was also a student in the university where I did what? I studied. And I remember our first meeting. The first time I met her, I was looking for someone to take to the pulpit. To take the preacher to the pulpit. I was an elder. And I couldn't find someone. And she had just entered the church. She was new. And I told her, I want you to take the, the pastor to the pulpit. And she said no. And I told her, why are you saying no? I am too shy. I cannot take the pastor to the pulpit. I said no. <laughs> I will take you with the pastor. Pastor Kayapo. And eventually she accepted to do it. That is the first time I met her when I was in campus. Spanning about four years later, when I was now getting out of campus, she's the one now, when I was looking for someone to get married to, providentially by God's grace, she's the one that I actually did what? I started quoting. You get the point? Did I study her during all that period? Yes. We were not in a relationship. We are together. But she was a friend. We are together. And let me tell you some of the things that led to me 
wanting to marry her, so that you know. One, I saw her respond, not to me, I saw her respond to the messages of dress reform. Amen? They were not coerced by me. I was not the one teaching them. I saw her weep because of how she was dressing. I saw her change her wardrobe. You're getting what I'm saying? If there's anybody who drank milk and ate meat, it was her. Before, when she got the health message, I saw her change her diet. So, me na angalia kutoka mba? Bali. We are not quoting. But I can see. Meaning, she's not doing these things for me. She's doing them for who? Number three, I realized that she was very teachable. Most people who met me thought that I would get married to someone who preaches equally as I preach. That is not the primary thing I was looking for. I was looking for a woman who actually loves and fears God and is willing to reform and get more light and grow with me. Amen? So eventually one of the things that now made her be the icing in the cake is that she was not just a friend, but also she possessed a meek and quiet spirit. She... she she was the kind of person who, if she's wrong, she admi admits. And by the way, when I made a proposal that I wanted to quote her, she told me she feels too sinful to quote a minister of my standing. She actually, first of all, wanted to turn it down. And I said, Makati, watu wote. You're getting that. And to me, that was a, red, that was a, a green flag. You get that was a green flag. That was indicating that this person is not proud. You get the point? So she told me, okay, give me three days or more. I pray about it. If God tells me that it is you, I will tell you. I told her, okay, you have all the time. <laughs> you talk to God about it. And that is how we kicked off our courtship, by the way. Amen? But during that period, before we were courted, we, were, we, we entered into courtship. My main agenda and my interaction with her. Let me tell you something. The moment you are courting someone and you want to study them when you are courting them, they will behave in the manner they expect you to see them. I'm Jani Pata. Nikijua na target elder fulani hapa, and I'm a lady, and I'm targeting an elder here. Na usha nionyesha unataka kunikotu, umesha kuja karibu na mimi, usha nitongoza and everything. And I know that I may lose you. What do you think I will do? I will hear everything you like. Nikijua, unapenda mambo ya kanisa, nitaingia church board. You are getting me? Nikijua, weni mtu wa nyimbo, nitakuwa kwa kwa? Nikijua, upendi kitu fulani, nitaingia hapo. The only time I'll change is after you marry me. Because now you have nowhere. It is only me and you. Yeah. So that is the reason why we say study somebody outside before that time reaches. But when you are in school, I would, not, I would rather that you don't enter into campus with the mere object of simply quoting. If you cannot put entirely out of your mind and go there with the spirit of a learner and with the purpose to arouse yourself to the most honest, humble, and sincere efforts, praying that you may have a close connection with God, it would be better for you to remain where? At home. In fact, this is uh, a call to medical evangelists. Uh, 36 paragraph 3, she says, it will, be well, it will be well could there be connected to our college, learned for cultivation and also workshops under the charge of men competent to instruct the students in various departments of physical labor. By the way, let me tell you, do you know you can be so busy in school that there is no time you have for coding? There is no time. Au, au, unashanga your time uta? Hey, then, then that questions me, that makes me question. How busy are you in school? How busy are you in school? That is a real question. And by the way, personally, I believe, maybe this is my belief with all my heart, that students who are connected with God's church, who are going to finish the work, 
must be Daniel's and Joseph's to the world. And that means that you must excel to the highest capacity of whatever you are pursuing. Amen? You cannot be mediocre. You cannot be performing, underperforming. You need to put a lot of time and effort. You need to understand the word of God. You need to memorize the truth. You need to be able to teach it with power. You need to, you don't, don't feel that God cannot use you, that you are incapable of performing. But if you spend your time right now in developing yourself, you will be able to achieve some of these things in no time. And that is why you find she's talking about the leisure hours of the student are often occupied with frivolous pleasures which weaken physical, mental, and, and some of these frivolous pleasures are movies. By the way, one thing I can guarantee you, if you want to be addicted to some of the sexual sins that addict people in the world today, I will just recommend be watching series, be watching movies, be listening to secular songs, and you will find sooner or later you will add porn to the list. Sooner or later you will want courtship even when it's not needed. Sooner or later you will become somebody who cannot use their time adequately. Now, Mano, whenever we are teaching you, by the way, I tell you, Marvel and DC Comics and, and some of these Hollywood things, throw them out the window. Amen? Yeah, I realize in my own life, by the way, I can't mingle prayer and Bible study with a movie. I can't. How do you watch a movie where people are being slaughtered after every three seconds? And then at the end of it, you pray that, Jesus, I want to be like you. As in which kind of mocker is that? A decision has to be made. I remember I, 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 I was weeping when I was taking some of these things out of my laptop and, and my phones when I was in school. And that is when I realized that some of the things that were more tempting for me became less tempting. Because there is nothing that is confusing my, ma my mind. Do you know a movie cannot sell in the world today unless it has LGBT agenda in it today. A movie cannot sell unless it has some something that encourages young people to premarital sex. A movie cannot sell unless it has something that defies God and his word. Either they are mocking God or mocking heaven or mocking hell or mocking... A movie cannot sell unless it has attributes that are ungodly. Actually, many directors who direct movies, they claim that in the movies, they are selling sin. They are selling what? Nidambi wanauza. Why is movies? And so, how can you connect your mind with this book? And at the same time, connect your mind with something that leads you astray. Many young ladies and men who are looking for uh, a companion that they are lonely in school are motivated by some of the soap operas and some of the movies they watch. You get the point? You want to fit in. And that is what Satan wants you to believe that you need to do. There's one more thing that you need to learn about keeping late hours. This one goes to all of us here, whether you are quoting or you are not what? Quoting. But you need to know that actually it is, it is, it is, it is not in harmony with God's will to keep late hours with the opposite sex. Listen to what she says. The habit of sitting up late at night is customary but he's not sleeping to God, even if you are both if you are both Christians. You can't go and sit in a lady's room up to 11, 12 midnight, every day. Huh? These untimely hours injure health and fit the mind for the next day's duties and have an appearance of evil. My brother, I hope you will have self-respect enough to shun this form of if you have an eye single to the glory of God, you will move with deliber deliberate caution. You will not suffer lovesick sentimentalism to so blind your vision that you cannot discern the high claims that God has upon you as a Christian. So keeping late hours are actually inappropriate, both in courtship and even in friendship. Another one is chatting beside the devil. Satan's angels are keeping watch with those who devote a large share of the night into quoting, could they have their eyes open, they would see an angel making a record of their words and acts. The laws of health and modesty are violated. 
Have you seen these guys who uh, sasita usiku wako WhatsApp? By 5 in the morning wako WhatsApp. They are talking with some lady somewhere. <laughs> But they tell most people, if you are if you are a gentleman, if you are a gentleman enough, most of your interaction with ladies should end around 8 to 9. Amen. Yeah. Someone calls you at around 10, Atakama is a member of the church and they have a long unless it's something urgent. They have a long conversation, just tell them, "Can we talk tomorrow?" Is it okay with you? Thank you. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> and I tell also ladies, you know some of this thing should be practical counsel. Someone comes to your room, unaona 9 imefika, 10 inaenda hapo tu hapo. Just excuse yourself. So, so ladies, just say you'd want to sleep. You'd want to sleep. I think it's better you go back. Allow us have some time to do what? Sleep. There is no harm. This is practical what? Advice now we are giving. <laughs> yeah, there is no harm. Ama wanaume mkiambiwa hivyo mtasikia vibaya. Mtasikia vibaya. Yeah, naona Masai imeenda. Naona ni wakati wa kulala. Just excuse us. There are some men who may even be church members, but they are making even the roommates of those ladies uncomfortable. Yeah, umeenda huko. I don't know, there are even others who co habit, isn't it? You you are not married, hakuna mahari lilipwa, hakuna commitment, hakuna vow, lakini unaishi na mwanaume. As in are you that cheap? Why would you do that? And for what? And do you know the moment you go habit like that? The faithful men of God that you would have lived with for the rest of your life will never see you the same easily. You know that? Because they consider you ma married. They consider you married. So you need you need to you need to know the boundaries of such associations and unions. The angels of God are are having Uh, those those concepts have in place i think seeking counsel we will look at in the night i want to just probably get a few questions from you this morning maybe one or two and then we have our a word of prayer there's something here that sister white makes about home calls and uh, this one i think i will add to this last quotation about sister white talking about the, the the fact that many young people do what they want to do even after they are given instructions but This is a very important part. This is Luke 16:12 says and if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's who shall give you that which is your own? I want to explain what this means. Let me tell you something I learned in my own marriage. By the way, the good thing I love about marriage and some of these things, every day you do what? You see in a home when the two of you come together, the lady a lady here comes together and you come together with another man and you're married. Usually in that home your parents are no longer there. True or not true? Mama yu, mama mama yako yuko huko na baba yako afanye nini? So who is the man? Who is the man? Nani anafaa kutunza boma? Kitu kiaribika? So what if what if in your childhood you did not learn the duties that a man is supposed to do in the home ama you are lazy listen to what she says it is by faithfulness to duty in the that the youth are to prepare for homes messages to young people page 466 one thing i need you to understand is this a lady any lady in this room you will only make a good wife in your home if you've been helping your mother be a good wife to your dad that is that has passed you because you are married na uji kupika chapo you're married you don't you don't even know how to separate beans and some of these things from uchafu you don't know how to prepare mboga of different varieties you don't know 
how to actually clean uh, the house effectively. You don't know how to do some of these things. I can guarantee you that that home will not be able to stand because you will begin having problems, not just with your husband, but your in-laws regarding your inability to do some of these things. I've seen so many women who are frustrated when they are married because the, the things that their mothers can do, they never took time to learn. You understand? You are beautiful, yes. Unaelewa kizungu, yes. Umesoma degree, yes. What well, about house, house cause? <laughs> you can't do any, you can't cook. Huh? Will you invite your mom to come and cook for your children and your husband? No. And that is why one of the essential things in preparing for marriage, I tell most ladies, by the way, be sure that everything you'd want to do in your home, you are able to do by yourself now. Amen? Yeah, you can cook food, you can wash clothes, you can take care of things. Be everything that a wife should be. And the same applies to men. Because your dad is not going to be there, you are supposed to be assisting your dad be everything. By the way, that is why we say majority of the times, families where one parent was missing usually have problems in their marriage. A man who is raised up in a home where they never had a father will most likely not be very manly in their what? In their home. Because there are things you may never have learned. So you will be a man, but you will have some feminine attribute. You get? You are, you are not, you are not, you don't possess the leadership of the home the way you are supposed to. And, and these things may affect you will find also that will happen to a home where there was no, there was no responsible mother. The lady will get into marriage. hanging lines unarusha kwa vi, kwa viti. As in a car for education. You get. Watu wakikula sani aziyoshu immediately. Zinaka di jio. And those are some very very terrible things to have in the house. Can you imagine a house where a man does not know how to be a man and a woman does not know how to be a woman? Which kind of home is that? Hmm? So those are things that you need to really learn and understand because uh, one of the things you need to know as a man in marriage is you're supposed to be able to help the family acquire property protection. Uh, you're supposed to be able to plan ahead. Are you buying land? Are you building? Are you... Uh, acquiring new things? Is your wife having a problem? With some, is there something you can buy to make the house much better? You're supposed to always be foreseeing things and, and your wife all the same. So that is the reason why even before you are married right now, the men who are here and the ladies who are here learn how to be faithful in duty in your parental what? Home. That will naturally come into your own home. You will realize it is very easy to manage your house. The last quote I have the most painful sense of helplessness when parties come to me for counsel upon this subject. I may speak to them the words that God would have me, but they frequently every point and plead the wisdom of carrying out their own purposes. And eventually, this has been my experience too. I remember there was a time I was in somewhere. This is my last sharing and then we can see I'm, I'm actually on time. I spoke to some ladies about courtship and I told them, they told me that there are some men who wanted to make them girlfriends in school. It was a university. And you see the way I've taught you this week. I shared with them that they are still young. They devote more time to medicine. Some of them are doing medicine and, and some of these other courses. Uh, they devote more time to studying in school, leave sentimental aspects out of their life. They first grow and, and stuff like that. And I prayed with them. And they were very dear friends of mine. But as soon as they got to second year, my counsel was thrown out of the window. I think they found fancy men. And they entered into courtship. You hear what I'm saying? As soon as they entered into courtship and they began doing some of these things, the very things we warned them against came in. There were actually three, I think four, three ladies that I was very... Sooner or later, they, they came to a point where 
they started engaging in premarital sex as young as they were in second year. One of them became pregnant. Out of her pregnancy, she dropped out of school. The man that impregnated her was not a Seventh-day Adventist. Now, the fee that she was being sent by the parents, she was using that fee, but not going to school. So, when I and she is with this man who is not a Seventh day Adventist. Sooner or later, they had a child. Right now, she doesn't go to church. They spend their time drinking from club to club. And someone, a friend of her, just told me that she dreads the day that we will meet. <laughs> now, the, there's, there's normally a problem that I find with many people is not carrying instructions that you hear when God has given you the privilege. Be very careful with knowing things and not doing it. Now you want to know about the other two. The other one also got into a relationship as early and got caught in immorality. And now she came to a point she told me that she is unable to stop. I shared with you yesterday, and I want to repeat to you, do not experiment with sex before you are what? Sex was not meant to be something that people do once. You know, most of the time, unapata vijana wengine, mta nakwambia iti, acha tufanya maramo, alafu tuwa, tuwa ache. Now, that is Satan. Sex, sex is connected so much to the brain, to dopamine, the pleasure receptors of the body, so that the body will always memorize whatever brought that pleasure. And the body will always convince you that you need to bring that pleasure again. You get the point? So it is your body working against you. So you will always feel after a while that I think I need that pleasure again. And now you will be looking for a way of getting it. And that is why you find those ones who entered into immorality because now they don't want to be in courtship, now they look for pornography. If they are not in pornography, now they get into masturbation. If they are not masturbating or they are just entertaining a lady or a man to fulfill their, desire, their desires, Satan has used a trick to actually take hold of you. And that is why I'll tell you, do not experiment with sex. So this lady came to me and told me she wants to stop, but she can't do it. She can't stop and we prayed with her and everything. I shared, the problem we are having is, do not wait till you get into these situations. And like I shared with you, even if you are there already, there is hope for you. Amen? There is hope for you. There is hope for you this week. But only if you are willing to do what God wants you to do. The other one, of course, didn't get that messed up as much, but she had a few breakups. First year, second year. Why, why is it that ukiambia mtu ngoja kidogo? They always just want to quote. Why do you want to experiment with fire and be burnt? Hapo ndiyo bayana niambia, by the way, is it vitu linyambia zote ni ukweli? Kwenye ziku ukweli ukiambiwa? Why do you have to make a mistake? And that is when you come to learn. God is capable and willing to actually... Uh, accord you strength. The good of society as well as the highest interest of the students demands that they shall not attempt to select a life partner while there is yet undeveloped their judgment, immature and while they are at the same time deprived of parental care and guidance. Uh, and that is why we, we are going to look at seeking counsel as we come to the evening. I will share with you how to approach a lady or how to approach a man. The first steps to take. Yeah, so that you do it appropriately. You don't do it wrongly. Is there a burning question before I pray with you this morning regarding what we've shared so far till this day? The question doesn't have to be personal. You can ask for, an, for a friend. <laughs> yes. Good morning.
is a good question. Uh, if they are eating and sharing all this, probably they are they are they are in, a, in, in around the same environment. I would uh, I would suggest that all the things they do they do within the limits of the things that we have shared. If in their association there is anything that has the appearance of what? Of evil, then whatever they're doing is evil in itself. What I mean is, if in their eating and doing all these things, there is some touching, there is some sensuality, ama they are giving an appearance of evil, ama they are, they, are, they are in a very seductive state where they may easily fall, then to a large extent it's more of a curse than a what? But if they are in total control, they have boundaries, they have re re reasonable boundaries, and they understand very well that the, the, whatever they are doing is supposed to be an example to others. By the way, one of the questions you need to ask yourself whenever you are doing something, don't just ask whether you are right, but ask, is, is your example worthy of being co? Kama kuna kitiyote unafanya hapa shule, jiulize swali moja, unezambia mtu wafanya jinsi umefanya. If you can tell someone the way I've come here today and tell you that you need to be follow me as I follow Christ, then what you are doing is very right. We are together. Lakini ukisema hii nafanya lakini siwezi ambia mtu mwingine ajaribu, then that is that thing has big problems. <laughs> so it depends on the the boundary of their association. If the boundary of their association does not uh, brings in unholy familiarity. You know what I mean by unholy familiarity? I talked about it yesterday. Where you, you are talking cheap, you are making cheap jokes, you are too intimate, and maybe you are leading others to think that they should actually be actually quoting. Do you know you can quote so much in campus and be so, be so, uh, be so clear with your activities to the point that the first year feels that I'm missing in life. Uh, you didn't get it. Do you know? Do you know you can you can motivate others to want to do it? So, I think the 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 issue there is not that they are eating together, ama they are cooking or or all that. As long as they understand that they are not married, and they are not to behave like married men and women, it is safe. As long as there are boundaries that they have within their operation. So if, if you are neighbors and friends and you are in a place where you can share meals together and have time together, just understand that God is watching and is interested in your conversations and how you do things. Amen? Yeah, because I know as students here, I know most of you are reformers, isn't it? You may have the privilege of wanting to eat reformed food and, and you share as friends. There is nothing wrong with that. We are not trying to make everything wrong. Amen? That is not the objective of this week. But we are trying to make sure that within the circle of your, of your association, you know that God holds you accountable for everything you do. I think I've answered you. So it depends on the limits and the boundaries of that. The number two and three is, it is not also very appropriate to make a lady who is not married to you to perform to you wifey duties or tasks. You get the same way a man who is not married to you to perform to you the duties of a husband. So, <laughs> those are very important things that you need to understand. I'm not saying that you're not supposed to support your girlfriend. If, if your girlfriend is in need and she needs support, you are supposed to do. But don't invite your girlfriend to come over for the weekend to wash your clothes. You get? Yeah, cook for you and, and do all that stuff. I, I, I don't think it, 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 portrays, it portrays maturity. You're supposed to, you're a, you a responsible man, isn't it? She will wash your clothes all her life because she loves you. But when you're still quoting, keep the boundaries a bit more distinct for your own safety. We are together. Yeah, I've seen people who when they are quoting, the lady comes, washes the whole day. You're getting it. Now what are you doing? It's, it's, it's not really appropriate uh, an activity for people who are quoting. I would prefer 
wait. And by the way, marriage, there's, there's a, lot, a lot of time to do some of the things that some of us are dreaming about doing here. You get the point? Uta arakishu, hakuna mdu anakufuata. You get the point? Personally, I wake up sometimes, I find my wife has so many clothes to wash. Juni meenda utumishi, siji wapi na wapi na nimeruli na nguo nyingi. You know what I do? I join her in washing. Yeah. I don't have a problem. If there is nothing I'm doing, I'm be away. you can wash this, I wash this, ama ntaziani. Ntaziani ka ukiendelea. Na rakaraka mnamali. Mnamaliza. And I'm not less of a man because I do that. So, some of these things actually will, will determine and will, will cultivate in you the, the principles you are having. But don't make a husband out of your boyfriend before he is. And don't make her a wife out of your girlfriend before, before she is. It, is. it is wisdom. It is wise. We are not saying it is wise to have those boundaries still clear until the time that you are able to bring them on board. We are together. Any other question? Yes. Yeah. Or it is God's will for you to marry. I saw that question. Someone had, had brought it to me yesterday. Uh, on the understanding of knowing when it's God's will for you to marry. There are points that I made on the first day. I don't know if you remember them. There are things that you need to know about the will of God. The will of God can be revealed in four ways. Four ways. Four active ways. But there is a passage in the book of uh, Romans chapter 12. Just open with me Romans 12 and we read one and two first. As I answer that question, Romans 12, just read from verse 1 to 2. Mm -hmm. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship or reasonable service. Uh -huh. Verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. That by. That you may prove that which is. Holy and acceptable. Or the perfect will of who? Of God. Now you will find the apostle is saying. What is the preliminary step. To knowing the will of God. Offer yourself as a willing. Living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. Unto God. Which is your reasonable. Worship. Then he says. And be not conformed to the standards of this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove that which is. Holy or acceptable will of God. The will of God can only be revealed to you, number one, when you are in a surrendered state to God. You must accept that you don't know, God knows. Amen? You are incapable, God is capable. If, if someone is not converted or they have not surrendered to God, they will not hear the will of God because the things of God are spiritual. That is the first thing you need to understand. The will of God is not revealed merely by a flesh-to-flesh -flesh interaction, it is very spiritual. That is the reason why we understand very well that Jesus understood it was not God's will for him to marry. And when he was here on earth, he understood his life mission because his life was always in total submission to the Father. He never deviated. The same thing we have with Jeremiah. Jeremiah was instructed at the time when... Uh, when Jerusalem was being attacked, that he was not to get married then. There was a particular instruction that Jeremiah received. 
And Jesus himself says that some of you will be made eunuchs of men. Some of you will be born eunuchs and some will be eunuchs for the cause of God, isn't it? Because God has called them to be eunuchs. God is capable of revealing to you his will in four major ways. The first way that God communicates to us once you've surrendered to him. We've said the initial thing is surrender. Do you know God cannot talk to you when you are not his? <laughs> the only way you can hear God is when you are given to God. The people of God, that's what the Bible says in Amos 3 verse 7. What does it say? Surely God will do nothing without revealing his secret to his servants the what? God cannot do anything. He reveals to his own people what he does. God will reveal to you everything. That is why I shared with you when you were discussing that a, a prudent wife yesterday, God knows the prudent wife you need. You, you don't know. But when you go to him in surrender, he will make sure that the lady he wants for you, circumstantially, providentially, he brings her to where you are. I'm Jani Pato. Do you know God can bring you the woman for your life in an attachment you are doing somewhere that you thought you'd never even get when you're finishing school? <laughs> you're getting it. By the way, the lady I got married to is not the one I really thought I would be getting married to when I interacted with. The first day, I was like, 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 I She's called Mrs. Amenia. You get the point? <laughs> God has a way, but there are four ways God communicates to us. The first way that God communicates to us, I'll paraphrase because I don't have the time to do a study, is by His Spirit. God can convict you in your heart regarding what He wants you to do. So that is how He can call you to know that you're ready for marriage. He can bring a conviction in your mind that it is tough, it is time. But remember the spirit of God communicating to us is always in harmony with the written word. Meaning the spirit of God cannot convict you to be married in first year. When you are still young and inexperienced. I don't know if you are getting me. He cannot convict you against what? What is revealed in the word? But the spirit of God will convict you. God will always find a way of sharing with you that you are supposed to get married. It is not the right time. And that is why I tell most young people, do not succumb to the pressures of life, family, and friends when it comes to choosing a life partner. I know, I know people who are getting married for their parents. They are getting married for their friends. They are getting married because they want to leave their father's house. That's okay. We don't have a problem that you want to be in your own house. But allow the Spirit of God to be your guide. By the way, the Spirit of God in your heart can make you single and very content and happy because He does not feel, He, does not, he knows it is not the right time for you to be ma. That is why I tell people every day, whenever you wake up in the morning, Surrender your life to God and tell him to fill you with his what? The spirit of God will guide your actions through the day and, and give you the contentment with the blessings God has given you. Amen? The second way that God communicates his will is through the written word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. It is through the written word. The other way to know whether you are called to marriage is based on your understanding and revelation of the will of God for you. Personally, for me, I believe that God called me into marriage because my family is supposed to be an example of a representation of his character to the world even as I walk. I felt convicted by re reading the word of God that I need a well-ordered home in my what? In my service. God will reveal his will to you in his work. My calling to ministry, by the way, was supported so much by my understanding of the work for this time. That is why I entered full ministry. As in, God will communicate to you through his word. The spirit of prophecy and the Bible have a lot of passages that will make you know whether the direction you are taking is in harmony with his will for your life. 
So the Bible will give you counsel regarding the will of God for humanity. The Spirit of God will personalize it to you. So that you know that there is a docket. Number three way God communicates to men. Apart from the, the, spirit, of, the spirit of God and the written word. What do you think is number three? The counsel of godly men. You heard what I said? The counsel of godly men. You will realize that they are ministers. Do you know, by the way, in my courtship, when I was making a choice now, I'd chosen this lady and everything. Some of my older ministerial friends are the ones who helped me endorse the lady I'm now married to. Because I considered them godly people, I thought they're what? They're counseling. And we shared. What, 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 what sort of perception? What's your perception? They told me prayerfully, let's pray about this and I, we get back to you. And if, if godly men give me a go ahead, you get. It harmonizes with what I was praying. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, you will always be there. So, the counsel of godly men can sometimes show you that God is calling you to marriage. You can find the counsel of people of God telling you, Mtumishi, the way you are moving around, it's now time for you to settle down. You get? Yeah, that can be godly what? <laughs> counsel. <laughs> or counsel can come in, in, a, in a given direction. It's, it's now about time you, you took this dimension. God can bring people in your life who will actually guide you in what step you are to take at a given moment. You get the point? That is also God's way of communicating. He sent Jethro to tell Moses. You know, we would be wondering, how would Jethro come and, and interfere with Israel? Jethro aliambia Moses, always he fanya ikazi yote? Was it implemented? Did God use Jethro? Yes, God can use the counsel of very godly men to do that. Point number four. What is God's way of communicating to us? Providence. Like right now, the providence of God, unless miraculous, cannot allow you to marry Obama's daughter. Because the providence of God has located you in Kenya. Amen? And placed you within this environment. So it will really be funny if you are telling us that the only person you want to marry is Obama's daughter. We would really be, be stressed up. Because <laughs> God speaks through his what? His providence. What he allows in your life. Most likely, the fact that God has brought you to UOE may imply that most of the time, not all the time, perhaps your partner will come from around what? The people you've grown up and studied within your school. I'm not saying it, is, it has to. But I'm saying it might, it might be. You get the point. So the providence of God will reveal to you. Providence are circumstances that God places you in. Where you see now, this is the time I think God has placed me here I need this. Personally, I believe that the providence of God opened a way for me to want to get married. I realized a moment came when I just wanted someone I could go back home to. I wanted a place, I would want it to be more organized. I wanted to have my, my things running. And, and one thing I can tell you, there is nothing beautiful as a marriage where the two of you are cooperating and supporting each other. Yeah? When there is something I'm not very clear about, your wife or your husband is always a what? An open consultation <laughs> regarding any case. So one is the Spirit of God directly convicting you. And if you ask God, he will convict you. Two is there. Written word. Three. The counsel of godly. Godly people. If you are not clear about something, consult godly people. Take to them the matter in prayer. Listen to their counsel. Listen to what they have to say. The number four is provi providence. You may realize that at some point in your life, you have the money, you have the time, you have the ability, and you have ladies who meet the standard you want. Is that not providence? Now you need to ask God if it is we. If the Spirit of God endorses it, and godly men endorse it, and, and parents endorse it, 
Why would you not want to get married? <laughs> you get the point. So at the end of the day, those things complement each other. The Spirit of God will not speak differently with the Word of God. And the Word of God will not speak differently from godly men. And godly men will not speak differently from providence. When you put all these things together, you will say, probably Vilejinsi Mungu na Nielekeza naona I may settle down in 2030 or or whichever year that you have in place. But God will always communicate to someone who has surrendered to him. Amen? Atakuonyesha. And one thing I want to guarantee you, God can even be more particular and even tell you it is her or it is him. If you ask him. Amen? Have I answered your question? Yeah. God is able to communicate through those agencies to reveal his will to you. I want to allow you to go to class because I know some of your classes begin at 7. But in the evening we will look at godly what? Seeking counsel. Sawa, sawa. So that we know how we... Are these classes assisting you? Are they helping you? You are learning a lot. Rise up then we pray. We are praying. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what we have learned this morning. We thank you for the decisions we are making. We thank you for the experience we are having as a church. As your children are growing in grace, may your spirit fill our hearts so that we may do what is right. Those things that are out of harmony with your will that we've learned, may you break the chains that have bound us to them. Those things that we are doing that are right, may you strengthen in us by your fear spirit. As we continue this week and the students are coming to hear your voice, Lord, may you continue walking with us, guiding us and sustaining us in the truth. For this we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And may the Lord bless you.